Okay, hi all. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, our last type of sequence or relationship and it's going to be an exponential relationship. So uh, the first thing is how would we test for an exponential relationship uh, if we were given a sequence of numbers and we wanted to know if there was an explanation, uh, if it was an exponential sequence, excuse me. So the first thing we would do is we would test the first difference and rule out that it's not a linear relationship or a linear sequence. So we test the first difference, see if it's a common or a constant difference. If it's not constant, then it's not linear. We then test the second difference, rule out the quadratic case so that it's if the second difference wasn't constant, we'd say it's definitely not quadratic. Um, and at that stage, then we could check for uh, to see if it was exponential. So here I've just shown you what we um, with an example here of an exponential sequence check the first lot not linear these are not the same check the second differences not linear so sorry not quadratic because these are not the same and then what i've said for the third step is that we'll check for a constant multiplication after that so it is possible that um that this is not linear not quadratic nor is it exponential i mean sometimes you'll check the two of these and you'll come to the conclusion afterwards that it's none of our recognized three sequences or three types of sequences that we have for the junior cert um but in this case when we do our third test we can see check for multiplication so going from this to this we're multiplying by three going from this to this Again, we can see that we're multiplying by three. This to this, multiplying by three, three nines are 27, and again, multiplying by three. When you see a situation like this, where you're multiplying by the same thing each time to get to the next term in the sequence, then you know that it is um, exponential. Now, of course, you could have done that from the very beginning, I know, rather than testing for linear and quadratic, but um, the reason I said do these things first is that uh, the, the most common types of relationships you will be coming across or sequences you'll be coming across will be uh, linear. So it's always good to test for that first. And then the second most common is quadratic. And more rarely will you actually be coming across an exponential sequence. So you probably wouldn't test for that until the end. So this is an exponential sequence. Um, how we would graph that then is the exact same way as we'd graph other sequences. What um, tends to be more useful though, or what you'll tend to find, I suppose, with exponential sequences is we don't really use this term n notation so much with these relationships. We tend to use this kind of notation. Uh, we don't have a way of finding um, uh, an exponential uh, sequence the way we had, uh, or sorry, term n of an exponential sequence the way we had for uh, both the linear and the quadratic. Uh, we just have to recognize them. For junior cert, the only ones you'll ever come across are tn equal to 3 to the power of n or tn equal to 2 to the power of n. Those are the two on the course for you. Uh, but as I say, ordinarily, we will see them written more like this, y equal to 3 to the power of x or y equal to 2 to the power of x uh, is the other one on the course. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, for this to be true though, uh, you would have to see in this instance, you would have to see this uh, first term here being term zero and this one being term one and this one being term two, term three, and term four. Because as you can see, if this is term zero and we sub in zero here, three to the power of zero is one, isn't it? Anything to the power of zero is one. Uh, subbing in one, three to the power of one is three, three to the power of two is nine, three to the power of three is 27, to the power of four is 81. So you'd have to really, if you were laying this out in a table, if they had given it to you, this would have to be term zero. But as I say, we don't tend to use this notation too much when it comes to um, exponential relationships. We tend to uh, just write it more like a function. Um, so one other thing to notice before we look at the graph is that in our other types, in our linear and our quadratic sequences or relationships, there it was always uh, n to the power of something. But for an exponential, it's the number to the power of n. So when you're subbing in, you're subbing in different values for the power instead of um, subbing in uh, different values for um, the number down at the bottom, the base number. Okay, uh, so then after that, 
term 0, term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4 is 1, 3, 9, 27, 81. If we wanted to graph that function, we would take this as the point 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 9, 3, 27, 4, 81. So 0, 1, <coughs> excuse me, 1, 3, 2, 9. And what you'll notice with this graph, I suppose, is that it, it has this kind of a, a, a look about it, this type of curve. But you might have heard people talking about, uh, especially in the media, when it comes to, well, when it comes to viruses or bacteria or uh, sometimes the profits of a company or the growth of a company, that they, they might talk about exponential growth. And when they do, they're talking about very fast growth. Because you can see here that at the very beginning, this is quite a flat curve but then once it gets to a certain point it grows very quickly same if you look at the actual numbers one three nine quite low numbers but all of a sudden 27 81 you know then the numbers start to get very big very quickly and so you might hear that uh, quite a lot on the radio and television when people are talking about something that's growing very fast they say it's got exponential growth